Dr. Sue Ellen Malami. And um, Sue Ellen's from the uh, Sao Paulo State University, which is a fascinating university. I got to visit there last year. And it's all over the place. It's really <coughs> quite neat. And the, uh, uh, Sue Ellen's been working with someone that many of us know, Jose Augusto Guimaras, on first her master's and now on her doctoral work. And she's going to tell us about the project that she's doing as a part of uh, Jose Augusto's work. And Swellen's been here since January and is going to be here through December. So um, you'll have a chance to ask her questions today, but you can follow mm -hmm. up later. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Hope. Um, I would like to thank the SOIS for receiving me this year and provide me so many experiences and also new ways to think about LIS. I would like to especially thank Professor Hope, who has teached me so many things and who believes in, in this research. Uh, today, we will talk about the research that we have developing at Sao Paulo State University, about how ethical values and ethical problems can be presented in KO. Thank you for all being here, and please interrupt, interrupt me when you want. Uh, the starting point of this presentation is that the professional perf performance of librarians is permeated by the dichotomy between the non-neutrality of the process and the tools of KO and an ethical commitment to correspond in a faster and more accurate way to the informational needs of culturally diverse user communities. This talking highlights the tensions which can occur in this context. Both presented this situation in the indexer day-to-day -day practice and offer us a solution. So let's check. Every indexer comes to a document with a mental bundle, bundle of attitudes, beliefs, strategies, received ideas, facts, general knowledge, and conventional wisdom. Much of this bundle is helpful in aiding in in understanding interpretation and representation of the document content. Sometimes, with documents that are polemical in style, or that deal critically or controversially with a subject, indexers may have to cope with material that contra contrasts with their personal views. If there is a serial mismatch with the indexer feeling so aggrieved by the content that the neutrality of the indexes is likely to be affected. The, the best course in the case of freelancer indexer is to decline the job. It is not necessary for an indexer to be wholeheartedly <coughs> in favor of everything within a document, but the index must reflect and represent the tone as well as the content. The indexer may experience distaste for some parts of the document but this must not show true in the, in the index. Although the index is a work in its own right created by the indexer and exhibiting their general and specialist knowledge and technical expertise, it must not reveal the indexer personal beliefs, attitudes, or judgments. Both highlight some key concepts about the tensions which can occur, but sometimes the, the indexer does not perceive this mismatch, and sometimes the indexer cannot just decline the job. We will also agree that the index is a constructed product, shaped by many institutions, but we do not think that it is possible to have an index which does not reveal some personal beliefs, attitudes, or judgments. So some concerns about ethics can offer us some options. Ethics can be understood as a knowing which intends to guide human beings' actions, while morality is a knowing which offers concrete actions to situations. Once we recognize that an actual ethical evaluation is based on principles which are universal and impartial, and that morality has its roots in the habit and is developed under light of reason, it is possible to say that both ethics and morality are permeated by principles understood as values. In this sense, 
values acquire a condition of rules, principles, or standards elected by a society which judges them more morally. In turn, those values judged as more morally right are accepted and respected by that society. Values can be understood as judgments about human actions based on cultural definitions of what is good and what's bad. Once the neutrality in KO does not exist, some theoretical aspects related to ethics can help us in the day-to-day -day practice because every ethical attitude is closely linked with moral values which predominate in our social group. These values inspire our actions and work as reference to evaluate if they are ethically acceptable or not. The subject ethics adopts a leading hold mainly in its professional dimension as a set of values that a specific social segment characterized by the specificity of a knowing and a doing established as necessary and fundamental for its profession. This introduces, introduces professional responsibility to this discussion. In LAS, this topic has been tradi traditionally addressed in terms of professional practice as a whole, for example, mal malpractice or liability, in or related to specific rights, for example, in the case of copyright, privacy, intellectual, intellectual freedom, often, often merged with measures of information retrieval or even perceived as imminent to a generic concept of common sense. As we consider that common sense is not a trustful judgment, we started to look for some ways to deal with the non-neutrality and ethical tensions. Our first attempt to have an answer was consulting the Brazilian Code of Ethics of Librarians, which should work as a guide to real situations involving ethical values and ethical problems in the day-to-day -day practice. For that, the Code of Ethics should discuss conducts and actions related to a specific practice. But the only chart which mentions KO in, on sec, is on section four, 4 about prohibitions. Here Cotuel say that, says that it is not allowed to the professional of librarianship in developing your work intentionally misrepresents the explicit or implicit interpretation of the sub subject of documents doctrinal works, laws, judgments, and other tools which support the technical work of librarianship. We then to deceive the good faith of others. It is not enough. So we decided to go to, to LIS literature to look for some enlightenment. We verified that LIS literature was already talking about ethics and we perceived two movements, one related to a deontological approach or professional ethics, as in the Wagen's analysis about librarian codes of ethics in different countries, and another movement focused on the core of ethical values understood as representatives to librarian privacy, developed by Froelich and Kohler and Caberton. But about KO specifically, does KO have a core of ethical values inherent to its practice? Fortunately, distinguished authors were also talking about how ethical dilemmas are present in librarians' practice. For Beto, for example, libraries and information systems should provide information access globally and locally, remembering that different discurs discursive communities need different kinds and avenues to information. In this sense, Beckel proposed the principle of cultural warrant, attesting that any kind of knowledge representation in the organization system can be suitable and useful only if it is based on the assumptions, values, and predispositions of that same culture. 
cultural warrant would work as opposed to literal literary warrant. So that one presents the cultural hospitality using the concept of hospitality from classification, which is the ability of annotation to incorporate new concepts and to establish appropriate relationships among the old and the new concepts. Cultural hospitality would work as a theoretical structure, COVID conveying an echo message. In other words, the, this concept would evoke the echo dimensions involving KO activities. When we talk about indexing languages, which covers two or more languages and cultures, we are talking about multilingual thesaurus. You don't highlight the importance of the coexistence, not just of the terms, but also the coexistence of values of these cultures. The attempt to promote an equitable treatment of two languages, some inconsistency may occur, and you don't give us some um, solutions to deal with it. For deal with K KO in context of plurality, of cultures and discourses, Garcia Gutierrez presents a theoretical conceptual framework that would support the subject analysis. He calls this framework interactive epistemography and explains that it combines characteristics of the precision with the political approaches of the process of mediation. From, from the pragmatic doctrine of Peirce, Telefson and Telefson propose an analytical <coughs> framework for knowledge domains with the aim to support KO. Telefson and Telefson emphasize the importance of a step facing the definition of which are the relevant concepts to a specific domain, which are signs of a conceptual knowledge interpreted by that group. This heterogeneous scenario brings to the discussion the social social responsibility of librarians in KO. Vanderwald advises that librarians should identify what is understood as an ethical conduct in KO and what is not an ethical conduct. Once we delimit what is the real behavior and what is the intended behavior, we should discuss with our <coughs> group of work which actions we can delineate. We will finish this small literature review highlighting the powerful concept presented by Olson in the context of KO, the power to name. Name is the act of bestowing a name, of labeling, of creating an identity. Olson's work keeping remind you, reminding us that we librarians decide what to re represent and what to leave unnamed. From this power, Guimarães highlights some commitments that we have in our practice. In other words, we have commitments while we are taking care of people and taking care of information. We have commitments with the user, the organization, the information, with the profession, and with ourselves as professionals and citizens. With the aim to provide some examples about what kind of commitments we have with these dimensions, we rely on some concepts also extracted from the LIS literature. <clears throat> Freud, Freud highlights that we should respect the user's autonomy, try to minima, minimize damage, and search for equity. Fernandes Molina and Guimarães advise us to focus on users' interest and do not allow censorship notifying the user about their limitations. Beto says that we must make our choices based on cultural specificities. Garcia Gutierrez presents the idea of transcultural mediation, which has the objective to preserve the cultural values. Yudon talks about the necessity to respect the semantic treatment of the language in multilingual thesaurus because they, they must give equal treatment for both languages. According to Freudish, we should preserve the organizational cred credibility. 
He also says that we should promote the public credibility to information. Fernandes Molina de Guimarães emphasized the importance to keep the information currency and the information retrieval precise. Complementing her concept, cultural warrant, Bechtel proposed the cultural hospitality, which conveys an ethical message, which evokes the user's power of decision. Weirdon talks about multilinguism in KO. Freulich remembers the importance of maintaining our professional credibility, while Fernandes Bonina and Guimarães say that we should keep in mind the objectivity in offering the service. For that, we have maintained our professional contents updated and separate our personal values to the professional service. Beto highlights a skill that we should exercise, which is the ability to identify ethical problems. And Garcia Gutierrez points out how we develop a service in between the organization and that this mediation is key and should, or should consider cultural specificities. Thus, librarians should respect the professional autonomy and try to separate the personal values to the professional service. Librarians should also see themselves as individuals with ethical desirability and should exercise their ability to identify ethical problems. For that, for that it is necessary to use critical approaches and valorize discursive comprehensions. Multilingual skills would help us with this task. <clears throat> Considering the theoretical scenario presented, Professor Guimarães constructed a research plan. So we had a main we had a main project with the aim to identify ethical values in LIS as a whole, and two sub-projects. The first sub-project focused on ethical values and problems which may arise from KO process. And the second one had the aim to verify how you women have been represented in Brazilian indexing language. It's important to highlight that um, there were more projects related to the main project uh, about um, male homosexuality and about other specificities. So today we will just talk about this two. Aiming to identify some theoretical approaches about ethics in KO, we established two conceptual domains one related to ethics, and another one related to KO. These terms were searched in specific areas of the articles, title, subtitle, abstracts, keywords, and titles of the sections. We, pick, we picked up 2,260 papers, but just 23 of them have terms of both conceptual domains. So. 23 articles extracted from publications of journals, CCQ, Ethics, Information Technology, Information Ethics, JDoc, JSIS, KO, and the Indexer between 1995 and 2004 were our sources. After a critical analysis of these 23 articles, we could perceive some evidence of ethical values, but they were not described under this label for the authors. We grouped these ethical values in three sets. The first one grouped the superior, superior values that must guide all the informational activity, such as respect to privacy, authorship, accessibility, freedom, safety, equity, diversity, and risk of risk minimization. The second set is about values which were previously recognized as professional requirements once they are essential to the action of an information professional, such as competence skill, efficiency, flexibility, 
reliability, professional recognition, keeping current, autonomy, power awareness, and cooperation. The third set grouped the values which were considered as information retrieval measures in the past, but currently they are recognized as part of an axiological universe of KO. We are talking about precision, recall, cultural warrant, exhaustivity, consistency, usability, and hospitality. Five fundamental values, which together correspond to 57% of the whole content analyzed, were observed. Privacy, precision, cultural warrant, authorship, and exhaustivity. The ethical problems as negation of values were grouped in two categories. The first set is more general and group the problems that are not specific to KO activities, but are present all over the world today, such as digital segregation, pornography, discharge of electronic garbage, professionals being replaced by technology, and violence. And the second one is a set of problems related to KO professional activities, such as surveillance, censorship, lack of cultural warrant, negligence, informational directness, professional inefficiency, misrepresentation, racism, ambiguity, marginalization, impartiality or neutrality belief, idiosyncrasy, inaccessibility to information, biased terminology, and inadequate translations. While a great dispersion of problems was found, surveillance itself showed a, showed a significant incidence to 12%. The prevailing values and the problems derived from them partially reveal two complementary dimensions. First, respect to diversity and specificity warrant which confirms the relevance of theoretical principles put forward by Yudon, Beck, and Garcia Gutierrez in such a way that KO tools can guarantee the respect to the cultural specificities. In this sense, we asked ourselves, to what, to what extent are the terms concerning women's questions embedded with biases in Brazilian indexing languages. In this SUBI project, our purpose was to analyze the presence of biases in relation to humans' questions by comparing four Brazilian indexing languages with the international situation described in the literature, especially also here in the US and Lopes Huertas and Rodriguez Bravo, Spain. So, considering that librarians should generate reliable and justifiable products because knowledge organizations is developed within a cultural context and aims to provide information to users, it becomes essential to ensure that they can recognize themselves in our catalogs and desks. To achieve this purpose, we construct grids between informational research, resources and the users. So it is necessary to verify how Brazilian indexing languages are labeled as subjects about women. For that, we elected a conceptual domain composed by the terms female, femininity, feminist, feminist, maternal, motherly, woman, and women. They were object of search in the following indexing languages subject terminology of National Library, University of São Paulo subject headings, Brazilian Senate subject headings, and law decimal classification. The choice considered their use and subject range in Brazilian libraries. In the 
basis of subject headings, we collected the descriptor, scope note, and the relationships. In the classification schemes, scheme, we collected the notation, classification concept, hierarchical context, and remarks, like suggested by also 1998. After the collection and systematization of all the terms found in the four indexing languages, each context was analyzed. Data were analyzed, taking into consideration the questions about women, the knowledge organization, and the literature available, not from a feminist perspective. From this methodological procedure, we picked, we picked up 3,060 descriptors, being 68.33% in subject term knowledge of National Library, 16.39% in University of São Paulo subject headings, 11.67% in Brazilian Senate subject headings, and 3.61% in law decimal classification. Of this, we created some categories or subject dimensions in which we could insert the terms related to women. The subject dimensions are crime, culture, law, education, feminism, history, individual, woman as individual, maternity, religion, health and sport, sexuality, sociology, and work. Now we will present concrete examples of prejudices related to women in Brazilian indexing languages. Starting from the subject terminology of National Library, which is an adaptation of the Library of Congress subject headings to fulfill the informational needs in Brazil. The National Library Foundation in Rio de Janeiro is in charge of its maintenance and management. In this subject terminology, the specific descriptor journals for women is, is used without the corresponding journals for men, which suggests the idea of an exceptional treatment given to women. The descriptor lesbianism <coughs> is used in the context of sexual behavior of women, which reveals two problems. The use of the suffix ism which denotes vice, rather than lesbian women, and the relation to the issue, and, and the relation to the issue only to sexual, sexual aspect, disregarding affective and <coughs> legal, legal dimensions. A social stereotype is reinforced from the prediction of remitting to femme fatale, a term used to refer to seductive women. Uh, these pictures are examples of books that are under this, these descriptors, but they are in Portuguese, so if someone wants to ask me about it. The specificities connected to religious issues lead to the idea of women as exceptions to masculine norms, as revealed in the scope note of the descriptor Woman Christian Theology which says, used for resources that deal with females, Christian <coughs> theology. Resources on theology of the human race and males from the point of view of two or more religions enter men, Christian theology. Resources on Christian theology of the human race enter men, theology. In relation to sports and physical in and physical edge, education, this subject, subject terminology attempts to include women in some specificities, such as soccer, gymnastics, physical modeling, weight training, and gliding, leaving other sports blank, thus revealing a tendency to treat women as exceptions to male norms and to consider generalists as masculinity. In the professional area, some professions are directly assigned to women, such as architects, lawyers, composers, philosophers, which in other activities, the term women is added to the professional's names. 
for example, women in aeronautics instead of human aeronauts, women in public service instead of public servants, women journalists instead of journalists, which shows that women's professional performance traditionally takes place in some privileged fields. The University of São Paulo, Subject Headings, serves the largest academic library system in the country and covers knowledge areas related to teaching, research, and community service of the University of São Paulo. In this indexing language, the descriptors women who have been hit and abused women appear related to violence in the family, which indicates that violence against women occurs only within the family, and usually refer referring to married women, thus excluding other circumstances. Moreover, a generic descriptor family is found representing attacks of a specific individual, the woman. Delinquent women describe the next two descriptors such as juvenile delinquent, Habitual delinquent, personage delinquent, political delinquent, and sexual delinquent, which leads to the idea of a particular <coughs> form of crime committed by women. Feminism is hierarchically subordinated to women, where this currently refers to a movement that supports both women and men in their struggles and reflections. The Brazilian Senate subject headings is used by a cooperative library network located in Brasilia, including the executive, legislative, and judiciary powers of the federal administration, as well as the federal district government. Here, <coughs> the adjective masculine appears only related to the descriptor homosexuality <coughs> throughout the language showing that the question is considered a characteristic of males or the norm, and women are the exception. The descriptor women's health reveals a tendency to emphasize only aspects related to sexual, education, hygiene, and maternity. Lobbyism classification is an expansion of the 340 class of due decimal classification, which is law. This classification scheme is widely used in this particular field in Brazil, since it predicts the application of due decimal classification law system, which is based on common law, to the civil law code prevailing in Latin American countries and continental Europe. In this language, they went women as alcoholics, alienated, prostitutes, etc. is under criminal law, appears, uh, appears under delinquents or criminals, criminals, and revealing that women are considered in a specific and exceptional situation, whereas the male, male is protected by a gener generic descriptor. It, it is also emphasized the fact that alcoholics should be assigned to class, classes related to health. Women's rights, in general, appears only in the context of family law, subordinated to married women, marital authority, marital authorization, which creates a false sense of dependence among these topics. Within the penitentiaries, I'm sorry, the notation uh, sex women con condition is presented subordinated to the notation circumstances that influence the sta status and legal capacity, which lends women an <coughs> inferiority status. Within the penitentiary sphere, penal institutions for women and girls is subordinated to other penitentiary institutions, which 
explicitly shows an exceptional and marginal situation. For in context of equity, one may think of penitentiary institutions for men and boys next to penitentiary institutions for women and girls. Another problem, previously pointed out by Santos et al., is the lack of criteria to differentiate women from girls as well as to determine <coughs> the age of admission into these institutions. When we cross our results indicating prejudice with the findings of Olson and Lopez Huertas and Torres' works, we can say that the major Brazilian indexing languages treat women as exceptions to masculine norms or ignore these issues entirely. And generally, generate is considered as masculinity. Masculine terms are used in the plural form with the semantic context of men and women. And there is a tendency to use female descriptors and to omit their corresponding male terms. When Rodriguez Bravo analyzed how women are represented in Spanish indexing languages, she concluded that some improvements also need to be done, such as elimination of sexist stereotypes from indexing languages, search for a balance between women and men, and elimination of the male term, terms as generic terms. So with the aim to eliminate the male terms as generic terms, Rodriguez Bravo suggest, suggests the insertion of gender qualifiers in the descriptors, such as W for woman and M for men, whenever the subject does not represent humanity in general. For example, we would have the professional librarians W, when the book is about the librarian, the uh, women librarians, and the professional librarians, M, when the book is about men in our area. When we think about this in Portuguese, we see some variations. So, in, uh, in Spanish and in Portuguese, these uh, letters will, will improve the equivalence of both. In Portuguese, gender is a category inherent to the noun and to the adjective, using the letters A or O in the end of the words. So, uh, sometimes this problem appears more in Spanish and in Portuguese because in English is the, we don't have this inclination. So, this discussion helps, uh, happens a lot about indexing languages in Brazil and in Spain. Differently than the possibilities presented by the literature, the four Brazilian indexing languages do not isolate women's issues to separate them from knowledge as a whole, and do not consider that subject of contraception refers to women only. Considering that an eff effective KO is key to the information access and acquisition of an ever-increasing number and variety of reserves in our fields, the application of mechanisms such as syntagmatic relationships, paradigmatic relationships, scope nodes, definitions, remarks, would create and improve contexts, making them more inclusive and flexible. We should think about information professionals' responsibility not only to make information available to the end user, but also to enable him and her to understand the underlying mechanisms of the indexing language, the standpoint and mission of the library it represents, and the discourse embedded in the products. In, the con in this context, knowledge providers must be able to identify and correct biases, otherwise, 
the user's needs will not be fulfilled. It is not possible to completely avoid biases, but there are mechanisms to elucidate and sterilize them. The LIS practice, and more specifically KO, has consequences. So, as Guimarães already pointed out, that a core of knowing involved in KO must be approached under the how dimension, but also under the for whom dimension. <coughs> Summarizing, our research starts with the search for understanding of ethical aspects related to professional, educational, and research dimensions in LIS, uh, including the codes of ethics in 2003. In 2006, we investigated how the literature was talking about ethical values and problems related to KO, its process and tools. Four years later, we started to look for discriminatory aspects related to women in Brazilian index and languages. So, when we finish, when I finish my master, master's research and Professor Guimarães finished his research project, we asked ourselves, how could a KO try to solve or minimize the problem of cultural specificities? How could the KO try, try to solve or minimize the problem of the biases, which reveals an inclination for the mainstream audience, and simultaneously deal with multicultural views? Well, these topics remain without answers, and I wish we can talk about them in the future. Thank you very much. Questions? <coughs> Do you use um, library of Congress subject headings in general in Brazil? Yes, we have some modifications, but the, the structure is, is the same. We have something different about nature and law. But the other ones is, is pretty the same. Okay. They translate the terms. Yeah. But it is, it's funny because sometimes they keep the terms in English too. So, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hog the conversation here, but you know, for Hope's class, Cultural, Social and Cultural Issues, I had to review an article that was on um, Latina, lesbian subject headings. Mm -hmm. And I had never seen this before, but they have, you know, in Spanish, they had the, the endings for the feminine and the masculine. Yes. And as she was writing, she wrote it with the ampersand symbol in the end to represent the O and the A together. Uh -huh. And I don't know if that's ever done anyplace else. I had never seen that before. Is that done at all in literature you've seen? Um, yeah. Yeah, in Portuguese, yes, we have this too. So it kind of symbolizes that it's general for both, uh, uh -huh. but that's never been like something you'd use in a subject heading. So you could get away from having to use the M or the W. I don't know if that... In some uh, feminist thesaurus, I, I saw that they are using this, and they use um, women and no women. Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay. are some... Um, some details that can yeah. help the domain, I think. Okay. Well, I have something that I'm just curious about. In the, the beginning part about ethics, mm -hmm. that I'm wondering why exhaustivity came out as being such an important value. Do you have any thoughts about that? Can you remember anything about I can check because I have the data with me. But I don't remember now. Because, ex I maybe. mean, it goes both ways. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. But maybe because we had a lot of uh, papers from JSIS, mm -hmm. and they use a lot of information retrieval mm -hmm. papers, we structured this value. Yeah. But Professor uh, José Augusto Guimarães <coughs> always highlights that 
we should analyze each one of these values. Mm -hmm. It is a great research to be done. Mm -hmm. so, well, see, and maybe. another another one was precision, and of course, that's going to be a problem if you're exhaustive. So, mm -hmm. be interesting to see how that comes out. I didn't quite get it. And language is also always a, a problematic thing for me. And when you talk about uh, very early on, you talk about ethics and the moral or morality. Uh, <coughs> I didn't get the difference. I, uh, this thing, uh, this difference between the two, has has been something I struggle with for many many years. What's the difference between ethics and morality? Well, for us, uh, ethics is more broad. It's kind of um, theories and thinkings about morality, which is a concrete, concrete uh, situation. I mean, if, if we have a problem here, we will have a problem um, from moral. That is something locally. It's here, it's happening here now. So <coughs> if you will start to think about this problem here, we will be evoke some ethical approaches. That is more something about theory and not about codes of ethics or conduct. <coughs> I always think of it, I think it's parallel to that, that if you were going to classify them, you'd put ethics with logic and philosophy, and you'd put morality probably with religion. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Is that? That's how. Yeah. That's no help to the Chinese. No. We don't have any. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right? It probably just. I mean, whole different systems of ethics, probably. Yeah, the objective of both are to improve the, the good action, how to be good in the human being's actions. So if you put morality under religion, actually we shouldn't be talking about morality here at all, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I think you were distinguishing them. Yeah. I, I, I guess I was, actually I was rethinking that. Maybe morality is more like an emotional kind of thing, and ethics is... It's, like, it's, it's almost like it can be personalized within an individual. Mm -hmm. Right. Wait, 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 which one? Morality. Morality, morality but you ethics have your own, would be you have your own moral code. Yeah. yeah, then it becomes a problem when you project your do specific we make morality this, onto somebody else. But do we make else. this distinction in whatever we study? I don't know that we always make it, but we probably should. In fact, when we talk about moral um, in our university, we can put them under social science too, because we are talking about behavior, uh, not just as individuals, but as a group. And when we talk about this, about a specific professional group, we still talking about moral and using ethics to reflect about it. And it seems to me, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can definitely see people's morality playing, like when we were talking about Dewey, right, that mm -hmm. all the categories for religion are Christianity except the other category at the bottom, mm -hmm. right, like there are these inflections of your moral system in Dewey as well, right, mm -hmm. and like, because it was, yeah. you know, based on their understanding of the world at the time. So they used that ethical and moral system, right, religious background, to choose how to name things coming from both the philosophical, ethical place and then also the, mm -hmm. I'm guided by my religion about what I think is right and wrong at the same time, I would think. Would morality be more about belief? Yeah. 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 Which is why you would align it, if you would think, with religion. Yeah. Because, I mean, it can all make sense within the context, but you have to accept the context first. Right. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what deontology is. Is that It's a professional ethics. When we think about ethics in a specific um, environment, and from the ontology, we have the codes of ethics. That there are some discussions about the the name 
codes of ethics or codes of moral and yeah the discussion is it's too wide so we picked up some authors <coughs> to guide us because our uh, main objective main goal was to understand what <coughs> are the values I mean what um, we will follow in our life, in our professional life, what are our beliefs of which is good or not. So because of that, this um, subject, this topic, it's so polemical. What's polemical? <laughs> because... Mm -hmm. No, I can look this up, but I, since you say polemical... Is, why do you mean? What is polemical? What is? Oh, the term polemical? Yeah. Um, <laughs> When something is not it it, it is not accepted for everybody of the same almost. way. Controversial. Okay. Yeah, okay, exactly. thank you. That's not my understanding. I think it would be controversial within a particular kind of context. I mean there could be controversial things that are polemical. Right. Polemical uh, generally um, there are discussions about it. It's like when people shout at each other off political TV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, I yeah, that. Yeah. 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 Polemical is ideological to make another. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we, yeah. start, <laughs> we, if we start to talking now about what are the values of the librarianship, each one of us will say one thing. Mm -hmm. So this can be <coughs> polemical. Okay. Questions or more words we should type in? <laughs> I can look axiological up, that's okay. <laughs> I, I just have to point out my absolute love for um, the category of passionate delinquent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why it's just. Yeah. Yeah. I think I have one of those. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it makes me think of the older term for women hysteric. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? Like the medicalization of that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And Suella Moderati should tell us what hegemony is. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>